Hello, everybody. My name is Anne Marie Hoftailing, the co founder of Story Imprinting, where we teach great people and great companies the art and science of storytelling. And today I am here with another hat chat, hence the hat and me speaking directly to you. For those of you who aren't familiar, this is where I just, you know, wear some of my fabulous hats and fabulous outfits, because where am I going to go? I'm trapped in this house like the rest of y'all. And I just come and talk to you about, you know, whatever I fancy. And today what I fancy talking about are morning rituals, which is something that's on our favorite things list. If you're not on our um, newsletter, you might want to go to storyimprinting.com and you can get all of our information there so that we can also send you all of the rich, exciting things we're doing at story imprinting but this whole notion of morning ritual came to me it's not like it's an unfamiliar concept it's not like i made it up i'm not pretending any of that's true um, it's something i've done more and less of over the course of my life just depending on what's been going on but i think is particularly important at this moment in time when i think people are feeling depleted fractured um some people are even struggling with some depression and feeling detached and isolated. And I think morning ritual for me has been a way to really ground myself. So I want to talk a little bit about what that looks like and what sort of kicked that off for me. As some of you know, who are more connected to me and follow me, my mother died a few months ago um, in August and she died at home surrounded by family in the most beautiful way you can possibly die and I still lost my mother. And it was hard and it was painful. I was incredibly close to my mother and have been my entire life. And in addition to all of that, it happened in the midst of a pandemic when no one can come and sort of descend upon your home and bring you food and be with you and sit with you and do all of those things that sort of allow you to walk through the grieving process in community and not alone. So in the process of that, I found post my mother's death, I was exhausted in a way I have never been exhausted in my life. And to give you some context, anyone who knows me even a tiny bit will tell you I am probably the most energetic person they know, bar none. I'm an extremely, extremely high, high energy person and always have been. Um, that's just, you know, I don't need a lot of sleep. I'm really energetic. I've always been that way. And I couldn't quite, you know, locate whether this was an emotional issue or a health issue. And it didn't matter to me. I was just so profoundly miserable. I realized that I realized I needed to do something to ground myself every single day. And so I started this routine that was really small. You know, I would wake up and before I left my room, you know, my dog's still sleeping on my bed, I would do 10 minutes of yoga. And for those of you who don't know, I do not love me no yoga. I mean, I'm the kind of girl who's in downward dog in a class looking through her legs at the clock, like how much longer, you know what I'm saying? But this was 10 minutes that I was just gonna stretch my body and sort of be present and really kind of energize, right? And then I go downstairs and I make my French press coffee and a really light breakfast. And usually I would go sit in my garden. Sometimes, you know, I'll sit in the living room and I write a little bit. Um, I have a journal that I just sort of write very, very simply in. It's called the four hour journal. I don't really know why it's called that because you spend all of 10 minutes in it, but that's another issue. And so basically I would just write, hey, these are the things I'm grateful for. This is the kind of day I want to have. And these are the things I want to accomplish. And I would do a bit of writing. And this, it, you know, this very small amount of time, it can be 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you know, whatever you have, it can be five minutes if you have young children. I just really implore you to claim a little bit of time for yourself to just be with yourself and to nurture yourself. Right now, you are probably taking care of a lot of people. You're probably working both at home and, um, you know, for your job and for your family. And I think that we all just get caught up in this idea that there's no time, there's no time, there's no time. But that's a belief system only you can change. You have to break that and say, no, 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 I'm gonna claim this time. And I'm gonna tell my partner and maybe even my children, like I need 10 minutes in the morning all to myself or in the evening or whenever it is. And maybe you just go for a walk around the block or maybe you read one single poem. I don't know, whatever it is that is required for you to be more present and connected to yourself. 
because what I believe truly and deeply is that you can't give to everyone when you have nothing for yourself. And I see a lot of this with a lot of the really high level women we coach, particularly they're so depleted and their strategy is to keep raising their tolerance to just think, oh, I can be tougher and I can do more. There's no prize in that. And more critically, there's no you know, value in that. What you do is you start teaching the people around you learned helplessness. They under function because you're over functioning and no one is served by that, not them and not you. And I worry dearly about the way we're not taking care of ourselves. And this world, the word like self-care gets bandied about, but it also feels like one more freaking thing we're not doing right. And I just think I'm not talking about any of that. I'm not talking about you, you know, working out for 90 minutes every day or going to a spa or meditating. If you can do all that, fantastic. Most of the people I know can't, they just can't. It's just really hard. That's a lot to ask. But carving out small, small bits of time and creating small ritual around that time before you go to bed, think about what you're grateful for. When you wake up, think about what you want this day to be about and being kinder and gentler to yourself allows you to be a better human, it allows you to be a better partner, parent, friend, and citizen in the world. You can't be those things and give all of yourself when you have been starving yourself. So feed yourself, love yourself, be kind to yourself, and let me know what you're doing. So feel free to comment below. Tell me your morning or evening rituals. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you have any ideas, of topics you'd like me to discuss during Hat Chats, please comment below about, regarding that as well. And thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next time.